Ladies and gentlemen, Tony and Pam Plunkett. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, judges, fellow contestants, friends and family. Obviously I'm Pam, this is Tony, and this is our journey. Before Tony starts, I would like to point out that he doesn't normally have handlebars moustache, but it's part of a staff fundraiser for Movember. It's beautiful, isn't it? She's a real gem. Kia ora, bro. I was born and bred in a small rural town in Northland, the son of a businessman who had big dreams of being a farmer. I headed south 30 years ago, got the high country bug in my blood, and have been managing high country stations for the last 25 years. In between, I married Pam 27 years ago, last week. We managed to have, find time to have four boys. Thomas, William, Ben and Oliver. I was a nurse from Omaru who wanted to marry a farmer, but got instead a musterer. And I've spent the last 27 years keeping everyone sane and going in the right direction. Coleridge Downs is owned by the Erdman family who farm and live in Hawaii. Over the last six years, we've really enjoyed working for them and relished the challenge of running Coleridge Downs. I'm encouraging the Erdmans to hold the next AGM in Hawaii. Before I let Tony take the floor, I'd like you to remember one thing, that behind every good man is an even better woman. There was just one hiccup. I was looking for a girl with no brothers, 10,000 hectares and a high country station. I got a painter's daughter instead. <laughs> what a journey we have been on the last couple of years, growing from 20,000 stock units to 42,000 stock units. <coughs> I'm going to give you a brief summary on how we integrate the four properties, the people that run them, our industry relationships to create a great working environment and a successful business. Governors, this is where it all starts. The board meets quarterly. Our three non-farm directors all bring a different skill set to the board. Our independent chair, Nick Miller, managing director, Fulton Hogan, brings some real grunt to the board with his business acumen. Fraser, our farm accountant from BDO. Fraser, BDO, 10% off my bill, thanks. Is board secretary and is a vital link between myself and the board. Very seldom do I present ideas to the board without Fraser's support. From the board drops out our strategic plan on a page, which gives me good direction. It is simple and to the point. This then drives my budgets, my cash flows, which are approved by the board. I then get on with what I'm really passionate about, and that's farming. This is our board focus. The crucial part of the journey is our team, 14 in total, and they're all here tonight. Planning and communication is the key. With one manager at Annabelle, three stock managers, weekly plans are emailed through on a Sunday night. Monthly plans are combined with an OSH meeting. We also have an annual plan. Obviously, this is relative to climate conditions in farming and usually changes but we have a plan. To attract and retain good staff. It's about having a good plan, giving good direction, giving them ownership, as well as mentoring them in the order to achieve our vision. I need to attract the best in the industry. I realise they will be career driven. I'm comfortable knowing I may only retain them for two or three years. I have an open door policy to help them achieve their next step in their career. In return, I get passionate, open-minded people who add to my business, thus turning a negative into a positive. Excuse me, Tony, I'd like to know more about this all on the bus that you talk about. Pam, it's a tool I picked up from the Rabobank executive course that I completed early this year. It's about a concept about getting the right people on the bus heading in the right direction. 
The odd time the bus will stop and you might be asked to get off. It probably won't let you back on. I believe that the tables were turned on you once. It happens quite, quite frequently. Matt was trying to convince me to put walk-through gates in the new cattle yards we were building. I wasn't keen. He said, Tony, you're not on the bloody bus. Come with me and I'll show you how to get back on that bus. He took me down the cattle yards. I got on the bus. He's got his walk-through gates. I learned very quickly that running on multiple properties, things have to be kept simple. While each of the gourd stations has its own stock managers, they are integrated from a management point of view, with stock, staff and equipment moving between the four properties. Each of the farms has its strengths and weaknesses, so stock can be moved around to utilise these. Essentially, we go where the feed and what is right for the stock. Part of my job is to ensure the managers don't get into a silo mentality, rather than looking at the whole business as a whole. Cash manager is a crucial component of knowing where I am financially. I have enterprised all the properties. Each property has its own budget, which helps make the managers and properties more accountable. We have strong relationships with our major suppliers, being Alliance, Headwaters, Five Star Beef. We're very loyal, but expect competitive rates. The size of our property can be used as a leverage tool, but it must result in a win-win situation for both parties. Through Alliance, we belong to the Sainsbury Producer Group, which allows us access to our consumers. Sainsbury also sponsors FeedPack, which is an innovative parasite control program that allows us to use cutting edge technology to get results for faecal worm testing within two hours. I have found that the managers monitor more frequently because the data is at their fingertips. Headwaters is not just a round breeding group. It is our version of farm to plate. I was founding director for five years and helped secure a PGP grant for 22 million to be spent over seven years, concentrating on new wealth with high health. This is targeting, targeting our lamb products with healthiness traits such as omega-3 and lower saturated fats. We believe this is going to be a real game changer. Something else we're excited about is AgriMap 360. Thank you, Paul Ruddenclaw. This is a cloud-based recording reporting system which will get rid of all the folders in the office. It will be where we will store all our information and will give all staff access to this site. And hopefully stop us getting divorced. A big driver for our business is finishing prime stock. We have identified that we need to grow our finishing stock faster. We are now planting more legume-based pastures, i.e. red clover, plantain and white clover mixes. We're getting good results. We're involved in fodder beet trials. Last year, 650 calves on fodder beet. Third year in, jury's still out. We're getting average growth rates. It's expensive if yields are poor. But we're finding it good in the snow and wintering big numbers on small areas. Last year, through Alliance, we set up a lamb share farming agreement where we supplied the lambs. It worked successfully and added to our bottom line, and we'll continue this. Things don't always go to plan, do they, Tony? No, Pam. <laughs> Last year, we sent heifers away, and they got, it was dry, and uh, we did dough. But if you're not in, you don't win. And finally, the big driver for Tony is... Cholera Downs Cadetship. January 2016, Cholera Downs is embarking on a new exciting venture that Pam and I are extremely proud of. We will be offering a farming cadetship program for six young people who will be passionate about agriculture. Our goal for the training farm is to deliver enthusiastic and capable staff to the sheep, beef and deer sectors, ready to hit the ground running. We have partnered with Lincoln Telford to, pr to provide the theory component, while Collaris Downs provides the practical. We will be drafting the cadets for passion and finishing them for prime. This is a real positive for New Zealand agriculture, as well as a win-win for Collaris Downs. It's going to raise us to a new level, forcing us to plan better, measure and record better. It will attract industry technology and bring with it innovation. 
This is about using our business and resources to give something immense back to the New Zealand farming industry. But choosing agriculture is a proud choice. So it all boils down. What is best for our property, our people, our environment going forward? It's all about planning, keeping it simple and getting the best out of our team. As Stephen Hansen would say, I'm only as good as my team. Thank you. Has anyone got any questions of Tony and Pam Plunkett? No, we've got a question over here from Donna. Oh, well, that was well done, guys. But um, I'm always interested when there's overseas ownership, how much interest is there on the environmental side of the farming? Uh, Donna, there's huge interest, and uh, it's, it's part of, of um, um, getting an OIO, and our... And our uh, our owners are especially uh, um, passionate about it, and in fact, they've, uh, over in Hawaii, they'll, they've just um, put 5,000 acres of their ranch into a conservation area as well. You know, we've put 2,500 hecta hectares in. Um, we're very environmental um, conscious, uh, so we get really good support as far as that's concerned. Actually, Donna, we were keeping a really close eye on our time, and so we had to skip our environment bit. I'd love to hear a little bit more about your environmental plan, Tony. P part of going through the OIO process, we, we have to identify um, outstanding landscapes and, and things that need protection. So we, get, we invite uh, uh, people like Doc and uh, Bird of New Zealand and all those sorts of people in, and then we do a big plan and do a partnership with them. So we've got a very good relationship with, with Doc and Walking New Zealand, and uh, hence we've got three walking tracks through our properties. Um, we're also uh, halfway through our nutrient budgeting and environmental plans. We haven't quite finished them yet. Um, it's, it's, a, uh, it's, a, it's quite a uh, process for us to go through, but we're certainly right there. A big round of applause for our first contestants. Well done, mate.